there's no secrets here. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Calex session. It is it is time. Um, yeah, stop talking. <laughs> well, nice to see so many people here. Um, but we have some remote people as well, I guess. Let's do a little list today. Yeah, remember to scan the, the thing. Place your details in. All right. Um, as always... This is the note. Well, these are the conditions under which you are contributing and involved here. Please be aware of them if you haven't read them already. Um, as you can see, the text is quite easily readable. So I just scan through that for a few seconds. Fantastic. Um, and also the note really well, which basically says be a good human being, uh, or at least a not bad human being, and behave well to each other. And you know the deal. All right. So I'm scanning through that pretty quickly, but I think everyone here was in the previous session today already. So let's get straight down to work. Um, for those of you who are friends of email as well, we're having a dinner tonight. You're welcome to come along um, 7 p.m. We'll probably meet in the lobby a little bit and stroll over there in the flyers. Here is our agenda. Um, as you can see, we've done the note well in five minutes. So we can move right on to this. Is there any agenda bashing? Does anyone want to change anything here? Yes. Ben Buksch, as I said, I would like to talk about HTML descriptions in ICAL. Awesome. At this point, I probably should say, uh, can someone please take notes? Because I haven't started typing notes. So if anyone has a browser open, they could note that down. If you speak, you're volunteering. Let's take notes. I mean, we could, we can have a, a few note takers. Uh, so yeah, anyone anyone can take notes. Okay. All right. Uh, first thing we had on the agenda is something Francesca asked to add, which is these two outstanding errata, um, both with event hub, usage of style descriptions. Now, I see we do not yet have Mike online. Do you want to text him, Ken? The first one suggests some additional syntax, and the, the second one has some questions about your Was this discussed at last ATF? I couldn't see any notes from it. Says we'll be a few minutes late and would like to speak about the JS Compact JS calendar when it gets here. Yeah. 
So the erratas, I mean, I, I'm surprised of the erratas. Um, do they come to the AD and then the AD, I mean, who is receiving those erratas? They come to, <clears throat> they come to the working group mailing list. Okay. Uh, I also received them and sometimes I miss them and I was just checking what was the status for any working group document or RFCs and uh, found those that were open. So Okay. Then it's I also fine if we don't want to like discuss them now, but um, it can be done on a mailing list as well if you want to move forward. Without either Robert or Mike here, um, pretty much what we have potentially talked about is anything Ken or Neil want to speak to from our agenda. What's on the agenda again? This JS contacts, JS calendar, um, subscription upgrade is in working group last call. That says iCal tasks, and they should both probably be submitted, but. Um, I wanted to speak with Mike about them because he's the one who's involved in them. <laughs> we have far too much of our work is stuck with Mike, unfortunately. <laughs> so just that. Does this expire too? Yep. Yeah. They're expired. They're in working group last call. It's probably my oh, fault for not submitting them earlier, but I would just like a refresh done. Not all of them are from Mike. Ah, okay. <laughs> Subscription upgrade is Mike. Uh, iCal tasks is Mike and Adrian. It's not really around anymore. So both of those are in working group last call, but they're also expired. Yeah. Um, That's not a good look. No, it's not a good look. Um, and part of this is that I had dropped the ball on a lot of this stuff, but also. Um, they need a refresh so that we can submit them. But are, are we missing some comments for the working group last call draft then, or? So there's working group last call discussion on our health mission nine months ago, February. Yeah. And then 06 got submitted. There's some more. Who's that got now? So, uh, I mean, uh, the, my question is uh, didn't Mike said uh, I, I need to fix something and we're waiting for that to be fixed? Or, I mean, it's. Well, I don't have a response from Mike. <laughs> Mike just, yeah. Oh, good. Oh. Mike, please. No. Ah, oh, yes, he has appeared. Uh, Mike, if you could pop up to the microphone line, please, um, and let us know what the status is on iCal tasks and subscription upgrade. Can you hear me? We're not hearing you. No. Yeah. All right. So you still not hearing me? Oh, it's good. It's good. No, you can hear me. Good. Excellent. Um. Which two are we talking about? Oh, oh, series and server side subscriptions? Yes, iCal tasks and subscription upgrade are both in working group last call and they kind of, the ball got dropped on them, but they have expired, so they need a new version uploaded. Which uh, oh, okay. Well, I can, I can, I can resubmit uh, those in a, in, a, in a short while. Were you aware um, if there it was any feedback that still needed to be incorporated or not? I don't think so. Um, yeah. I'll, obviously, I'll, I'll check before I, I do um, resubmit them. But, um, yeah, they probably just set too long. Yeah, there's some feedback uh, from Jorans, I think. Uh, eight months? 
months ago, 1st of March. Oh, okay. Part of draft ICF Jazz contact and Jazz contact retards vets. No, but that's a no, GS cast. So, okay. yeah. Uh, Baran? Yes. Um, so, I was checking the history of the two documents. Yep. And the state is in working group plus call. Yep. But the working group plus call, I'm looking at a uh, subscription upgrade, for example, was started October 2022. And it was never taken out of the state working group last call. So yeah. what, what I suggest we do is that we take it out of working group last call. Yeah. Mike submits a new version as soon as possible. And then we do a new working group last call uh, this time, like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Not, two years. Not one year. All right. Uh, how about we'll take them out right now? Um, but the problem is going to delay okay. us two weeks. That's okay. <laughs> I see that. There we go. So I'll take subscription upgrade back to just the working group document as well. And then we'll call a new last call as soon as you uploaded the new draft. Yep, I can I can probably do that later today. Cool. Uh, um, so that's some... this up with. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, so... all. This was Charles Baum. Yeah, I think there was some, there was some feedback from mine a few months ago, but it it was not all too big. So maybe it, well, if it would I'll help if you just look. yeah take a quick look and yeah, it's not it should not be add a lot of work, and if no, it does, I'm... you can talk to me. <laughs> all right. Yep. Yeah, I'll I'll take a look. So um, do you think you could do that um, in the next two weeks? Well, they, they resubmit them? Yes, he, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's good. Excellent, thank you. Um, Jess, contact and Jess calendar. We're going to hopefully wait until Robert arrives. VPOL. I just um, resubmitted a, a VPOL. Um, I still need to do some work on, on I, I, I did some work on re-implementing it with Participant. I mean, the, the spec has been has up, been updated. Um, I, I resubmitted it actually last night, um, and I the biggest change to it is I um, I changed the I tip part of it to be um, more in line with the way I think I tip should go. Anyway, it, it's got all those huge tables in I tip. It's completely well. It's not completely unreadable, but it, it it sort of obscures what you're trying to do with ITIP. Um, it's, so I, I've uh, I've made it a, a much simpler looking section. It makes it clearer what you're supposed to do when you're sending these things and receiving them. So that's the that's the biggest change. Um, and I still need to get an implementation that's that's fully working. Yeah, and I think there are still some <clears throat> some issues uh, further on in the in the ITIP section which which need to be tidied up. But again, it, I think simplifying that makes it easier. It's um, it's not as hard as ITIP makes it look. But uh, are you ninety nine percent done for Vpool or? Well, we we've had working working uh, we we tested Vpool between about half a dozen servers at one time. But we did change the um, the spec. It, it used to have a, a um, its special own voter component, which I changed to be participant. So that's yeah. that's the biggest change to it. But yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that if we can get get a couple of us testing it, then it's pretty much done. Um, as I say, the only the only section that I thought needed a little more work was um, was the ITIP. Part of it, um, 
because I need to just check over that it was actually correct. And, and simplifying it makes it a lot easier to, to, to work through that. So, so actually yeah, we can start reviewing that document. Yeah, I think okay. I think so, yes. Yeah, okay. I'll do that. All right, uh, Robert is here. So, Robert, if you would like to present. Um, I guess starting with JS Contact. Um, yes, um, I can. I, I will share the JS calendar slides uh, on my own later, but JS yeah. Contact, let's start with that first. Um, yeah, JS Contact, there's just one slide uh, after this one, and this is we are go as good as done. Um, so um, uh, I've this this morning, I um, I was reviewing the IANA um, feedback. I realized we made a few uh, mistakes in the IANA registry, which I will ask IANA to correct, um, uh, and we will publish a new draft version which uh, include these changes. Um, um, one of the things we did in the in the in the in the last time was that um, we tested both Mario's and uh, our implementation um, and we're using um, interoperation tests that uh, that we hack together. So if anyone is interested in testing their implementation too, we uh, publish the source for these tests. Um, and um, that's basically it. Thanks for everyone uh, contributing to it. Cool. Congratulations. And thank yeah. you to you, Robert. Thank you. All right, um, so that was JS Contact. Let me now ask to share the slides. However, oh, you, I guess I need some permission first. Uh, yep, yeah. how do I approve that in this interface? I'm sure I know how to do this. Otherwise, we can do it um, with you sharing it. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, I can give you a little tick. There you go, Grant. Ah, perfect. Um, so. All right, JS calendar. Um, so I don't know if everyone uh, in this meeting also was um, present this morning in the JMAP and extra meetings, um, where we already had um, uh, talked about JS calendar bis shortly with regards to the JMAP for calendars and JMAP for tasks specification. Um, in this session now, uh, at, at, in this meeting in the morning, I basically said like, we should not wait for JS calendar biz. Um, and in this session now, I would like to um, get a common, get us all on a common understanding on where we are with JS calendar biz um, and uh, what would be the next steps that, that we might take. So I now need to figure out how to uh, go to the next page. Um, so just a short recap. So. We had published JS Calendar in 2021, uh, in, in summer 2021, and a year later we started um, working on JS Calendar BIS, um, which basically was the result of us not publishing the JS Calendar iCalendar conversion draft together with JS Calendar. So when we continue working on the when we when we continued working on the conver conversion, we realized that there are a couple of gaps that we need to close. Um, and mostly in scheduling, we found some of these gaps hard to close. Um, we're very shortly said the semantics of scheduling in JS calendar are a superset of the ones in iCalendar. Um, so we weren't sure how to best um, to either, if, if we should either use the semantics of iCalendar or if we should go with the ones of JS Calendar and figure out how to prop that uh, onto iCalendar. Um, in 2022, then uh, we, in an interim, we made the decision um, to go with the expanded, uh, extended scheduling semantics of iCalendar um, and uh, started defining properties around it, but then basically JS Contact took all the focus um, and uh, we didn't further work on that. So that's that's the history. Um, 
I've been looking now um, uh, where we are with JS Calendar Biz, and I've been so what you see here is the list of changes that we uh, that we had made in, in addition to the already published uh, JS Calendar uh, specification. And since it's a long time, I wanted to my own on my own get a better understanding on where on what were these changes actually. Um, as you can see here, um, quite a couple of them are basically just additions. So this is all you see on this page of the changes is stuff that we could easily um, just um, just bring into JS Calendar with an IANA registry addition. We do not necessarily need to uh, obsolete or even really update JS Calendar. Um, although we might want to define a new RFC for some of these properties if they are uh, not basically trivial to uh, specify. But I think looking at them, I think all of them basically are. So I think we wouldn't even need a new internet draft for either of these changes. Um, then also quite a chunk of these changes really are clarifications and fixes to, JS, to the JS calendar RFC. So looking at them, none of them really would, in my opinion, um, on themselves be, be, would warrant coming up with a new RFC document. Some of this stuff we might even want to push into as an errata, but I'm not sure if that's the best approach. Um, but basically, um, these are also, this is also stuff we could somehow just more document. Um, then there is there are a few changes which are renames. Um, I've been told at an earlier meeting, um, I think last year or so, that um, so basically I when I defined these renames, I was just thinking of well, if we are coming up with a new specification for JS Calendar anyway, we can just also rename a, some stuff for consistency. Um, I got uh, told by someone who implemented JS Calendar already that they are not keen on just doing renames just for fun. And I take that, I ac accept that. So this, all these renames basically is stuff we could easily drop all together. Um, I mean, uh, it, it, it would make things probably a bit more consistent, but I mean, it's not, it's not much of a big deal. So, and then interestingly, only two things are left. And these are these are stuff that are really incompatible changes. So they are really like the gist of what we identified to be uh, an issue with the current JS calendar specification, especially when it comes to iCalendar um, conversion. So the first one is this, um, the schedule ID, which was um, the content of the discussions I had mentioned earlier. Um, and when I look at them now, um, I think we can come up with an inc a compatible, a JS calendar compatible definition or a JS calendar incompatible definition. The JS calendar compatible definition um, is basically easy to define for JS calendar, but it will make conversion to iCalendar a bit more brittle. Um, so there are cases then where we don't really know, at least I don't know off the top of my head, um, how we could convert them to iCalendar, but um, I think that would be even fine. But then the other, um, the other, the, the, the JS calendar incompatible definition would be a redefinition um, of some of existing properties, namely the delegation and member of properties of the participant. Um, and then basically we would have, um, I think we would have covered all cases of iCalendar um, uh, scheduling conversion. Um, both, please take um, with the disclaimer that um, we would do some some more thorough testing and discussion of this, but I'm pretty sure that um, this is fine. Um, the other um, incompatible change, uh, which we could also like sneak in as a compatible change to JS Calendar, is that the time zone definitions that we defined in JS Calendar are kind of a pain um, for edge cases where with regards to converting them to uh, vCalendar components in iCalendar. Namely, it's the first issue is really more of a redundancy issue is 
that at the moment, since an event defines its time zones, imagine you have a group of events, um, then each of them would need to define their own time zones again if they are custom time zones. Um, so that's kind of redundant. But this also has another issue, like if, if you would come up with two time zone, custom time zone definitions in two different events in the same group, which have the same time zone ID, we just cannot map this to iCalendar basically. So what we would suggest is, um, what I would suggest is that we mark the time zones property for event and tasks as obsolete uh, in the IANA registry and add this property to group. And then basically that's also something we wouldn't necessarily even need a new draft for. Um, there is a f some of stuff that I would like to bring to JS con contact, uh, uh, sorry, to JS calendar from JS contact though. Um, and this is first versioning. I think that the versioning that we defined for JS contact, um, I really hope it to be useful. Uh, it certainly um, brings in more um, versioning semantics than we have for JS Calendar, which I think we do, don't have any at all at the moment. So that would really bring value in my opinion. Um, secondly, I would also like to bring in that we can make the type properties uh, optional in JS Calendar um, because it first it really reduces the, the, um, uh, the amount of data, but also it's something I think it's, it, it's it just looks better. And I think for some developers, that's um, that's also value. Um, and last but not least, I would also like to align the uh, semantics of the patch object uh, that we had to um, that we had to redefine for JS contact with regards to patching existing array members. For consistency, I would also like to bring this to JS calendar. Um, but I'm not like, um, it, it, it's not a hard requirement, but I think it would be, I think it would be better if at least these two formats are consistent um, and the JMAP uh, patch object definitions still are more restrictive. I see that yours is in the queue and I think that's insofar great as I'm just um, at the last slide. So looking at the, at the looking at it of where we are with JS calendar, I would suggest, and this is just a suggestion, um, I think we could go forward like this. We register all the stuff that I identified before as merely additions to JS Calendar. We don't need to wait for JS Calendar. Please. We just define them now. We register them at IANA. Um, and uh, uh, we will just need to come up during expert review if any of them require a new RFC, or we can just um, come up with some other documentation for them. Um, I, I would say after some more testing, I would suggest we go forward with the backwards compatible schedule ID definition uh, that are outlined for JS calendar. Um, and I think that's the only th the hard requirement that we need to make uh, JMAP for calendars scheduling um, useful. And for any of the other stuff, we should, we should come up with a JS calendar BIS, but then we are not mu as much in a hurry because we are not going to block um, the main uses cases of the JMAP for tasks and JMAP for calendars um, uh, uh, RFCs. And if we define JS calendar bis and we bring in the versioning as from JS contact as I had suggested, uh, we might then later define if we want to come up with a backwards compatible version 1.1 for JS calendar or a 2.0 if we decide to break stuff. Um, and uh, that's the end of my presentation. So. Looking forward to your feedback, Joris, and whoever is answering the queue. Yeah, this is Joris Baum. So I think it's very valuable to keep JS Calendar in sync with JS Contact because they're both underlying data formats that are used in JMAP. Like it, it doesn't make any sense to make to have a different, I don't know, structure between between those. Um, yeah. I'm not fully understanding the next steps here. Um, is did, am I reading that or understanding that correctly? That you want to you want to not include the schedule ID in the first version 1.0, and then um, no, actually the other way around. So I'm suggesting that um, all the stuff that we now 
added to the non-published JS calendar bis uh, draft, which are just additions, which are not like really changing anything of the existing JS calendar data. We should add them and we should add the schedule ID where we have two options how to define it. The first one, the compatible one, so the, the thing here is that at the moment, the delegated from and to properties and the member of properties um, are defined to, to point to a participant ID in the same object. Whereas for that doesn't help us still with converting to iCalendar because for iCalendar, we will require then that this participant must include a schedule ID property because this schedule ID property value is the cal address of the attendee or organizer in the iCalendar data. So we in the in this ver, in this in this compatible um, change, which is just compatible to JS Calendar, uh, we might end up delegate that one participant delegates to another participant in the same event. But if the delegatee doesn't have a schedule ID, we cannot, um, we cannot convert this information to iCalendar because we are missing the thing that allows us to converting that. I think that's kind of an artificial uh, issue because for every from iCalendar to JS Calendar converted event, this is not going to have to happen ever. Um, it's just for the way from JS calendar to I calendar. And I mean, um, in, in, if, if that's the case, then, uh, well, may, then there is just stuff you can't convert easily to I calendar. That's just how it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks for clarification. Makes a lot of sense in my opinion. Um, just maybe quickly, uh, last question then. Um, is there something then blocking you from continue work like is there additional interrupt testing or something you it mean sound to me like it it sounds to me like then everything should more or less already be there right you mean uh, for for what for updating gs calendar or for writing gs calendar biz or for i'm not i guess both did i <laughs> not get that right <laughs> okay so um so for so neither is is blocking. Um, it's just as always a matter of um, uh, of the time we have available to do that. Um, but since time also is kind of a concern to me to um, to um, have JS calendar defined as useful as possible as soon as possible to get more traction on the JMAP specs that build on it. Um, um, I think it's, I would suggest that to first do all the quote easy changes to JS calendar um, and postpone all the stuff that might be better to have at some point where we are not under much pressure to come up with JS calendar biz. That's my yes. suggestion. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, please, Neil, go. Yeah, it's Neil. I just wanted to, I think it's mainly been covered, but just making sure I understand uh, with the schedule ID. I think the schedule ID is the only thing that really affects JMAP calendars um, in all of this. So the idea is we add the property and that's just, as you said, a registration and we can have a, maybe a short document that defines these new properties that we're adding. Um, but then we leave the um, kind of type definitions for the delegated member of to point to the participant ID because that would be a breaking change if we change that. Is that the plan, Robert, just so I can clarify? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So um, I would also say that we keep the non-breaking change, uh, but so that will mean that if we, when we define, when we add the schedule ID property to the current JS calendar specification, we will um, extend the definition of the um, of the delegated from property to say this points to a participant um, ID. And, and actually, we do, actually, that. sorry. It, 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 yes, it yeah. already does it, and this is kind of bringing um, a bit of a, of like it, it, it makes things a bit more complicated with regards to iCalendar conversion because yeah. if 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 we wanted to have it um, uh, watertight, we would redefine the delegated to property to say it must point to this to the schedule ID and not to some mm -hmm. participant ID. But I yeah. think it's um, I think the 
edge cases, edge case we would cover with that is not um, uh, is, is is not enough to bring in a breaking change. Yeah, I agree. It's not important enough. And breaking change is bad. If we can avoid them, it would be great. Yes, so, that's also my okay. opinion. That, that, that works for me, I think. So then, yeah, that should be easy to do. And that and then JMAP calendars is basically ready. So we just need to add that. Do, do we want to add the schedule ID in the JSON JMAP calendars document itself? Or maybe better to keep it separate still if we're adding some other properties too, like you. We probably want a short document with all those properties you want to add as just like extensions to JS calendar or something. We, we yeah, I mean we are um, we are having expert review um, as the um, registry change procedure, so it's up really up to us to decide if we want to come up with an RFC or if if the description field in the IANA property description is enough. But I think we can yeah we can just take this decision on the list. Yeah, this is Ken. I was actually just looking at the uh, the documentation we've got for the registry, and it says if we're going to register something as uh, with usage common, it's supposed to have sufficient documentation. So my question would be for Francesca, could that just be a web page that has the documentation for the properties? And then once we actually do JS calendar BIS, we can roll those definitions into that actual RFC. You know, does it have to be a, a, a IETF spec to qualify for sufficient documentation or does, have to, does it have to just be a location where you can actually go get the definition? Um, it, I would have to see how that sufficient documentation text is phrased, or if there is like experts, they would be the one to decide if that that's enough. Um, it does not have to be, um, a, a spec like a RFC, um, maybe a draft would be enough. Uh, but yeah, it, it's. I can only give you like my uh, personal opinion, but then it's the expert's opinion so that matters. So we'll just roll that in the right. But in general, the problem with web page is that you there is like who who is maintaining that and uh, yeah. So adding to that, um, adding to that, um, this is also what we currently have defined in the JS calendar RFC in the IANA considerations, um, where I think there is a section um, advice for experts or something like that, uh, which basically also says um, either it's an RFC or it's a public web page like a wiki, or um, it's just the uh, documented in the description uh, column of the IANA registry. And it's up to the experts to decide what's required. Um, although I also think that the public web, web page is um, my, the least thing. The, the, I, I wouldn't want the public web page just because this stuff <laughs> tends to bit rot uh, sooner or later. Yeah. But I, I have a question. Um, you, you show a Git log on a XML file. The, that XML file is a draft, I guess. Um, yeah, so this is just the this is just the the changes on the JS calendar bis document. So these this is kind of the list of stuff that we had so far planned to bring into JS calendar. Um, so this is kind of the diff of what JS calendar bis is at the moment with regards to JS calendar. Okay. Um, and how far is that document ready to be shipped? Well, I mean, um, so theoretically, can... it's every every item here is um, is written in a way that it should be enough for like it's it's not a, like it's not written as drafts. It's written as complete definitions. Um, oh, okay. But um, um, it's it's still like um, we haven't had much many discussions um, about some of mm. this stuff. So yeah. Okay, but so right. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't want to press hard on JS calendar biz to get published. Um, I would really like to only publish JS calendar biz in tandem with JS calendar I calendar. Because only then, only when JS calendar I calendar is published, we will have, we have come to a point where we say, okay, we are, now we have covered all of the I calendar conversion. Um, okay, and, I see. Yeah.
so the action from all of this, um, Robert, you're, are you going to do the registration with Diana? Yep. Um, I think we'll need to go over the list, um, over the mailing list. Um, I think we, we just need to follow the, our own um, designated expert review process for each of these items, which I guess will instigate some discussion on the list. And then for each of these items, we will define if um, uh, what kind of documentation is required. Um, and that, that includes all but schedule ID. For schedule ID, I would first um, take some more time, not much, uh, promised, um, to really check that it's something we can now, um, that using it as we define it is, is going to um, be not an issue with, with iCalendar. I think we've done this, but I just want to revisit it because it's been over a year since I last looked at it. Sorry, Joris Baum again. Can I make that a bit higher? Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's all a good, good idea. You can do that. You can do that. Uh, what, what I don't really like about that is it might still not look all too good. Like if we then, okay, we, we are then able to publish JMAP calendars, JMAP tasks, uh, and extend JS calendar, but developers will look at that and or might look at that and see, okay, I can now implement JMAP tasks, JMAP calendars, but I will need to wait a few months and then there will be a new version of JS calendars that I am supposed to implement. So why should I implement all that now? Just uh, a thought of mine that I want to put out there. It, yeah. Uh, the question I mean, is what do we gain from splitting it out? Maybe we could even drop the biz. I don't know. <laughs> Let's say we don't have a, have a perfect conversion to iCalendar and live with that. But, but I, I think I don't want to block the, the way you, the, your proposal. It's, it's also perfectly fine. Just want to put it out there. Yeah, so um, I think there are two answers to that. So first, if it's BIS or not, we can surely talk like, yeah, what, whatever the name is. Um, but um, what I can relate to the, the idea of why would I want to implement this, but not wait for like the real thing or whatever, like um, developers should just be accustomed that this thing will always evolve. I mean, that's is exactly why we added a versioning scheme to JS Contact. Um, to make clear that there's always going to be new stuff, hopefully, because it's uh, people will find new use cases for that. So the same thing should be for JS Calendar. We can say, I mean, JS Calendar basically now is 1.0. Um, so, but we can just, we shouldn't think in RFCs uh, that obsolete uh, the existing spec. We are just adding new stuff. Um, that, that should be the mind, mindset. Very good point. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, are we done on this now? I th at least I am, so. Excellent, thank you. It looks like we have an action, Robert, to, to go on with the next steps on that. Yep. Um, other documents we had, server-side subscriptions and series. Mike, do we want to do anything with those? Kill them? Bring them back? Um... Well, server-side subscriptions, I think um, we were sort of prodded into that by Apple years ago. And, um, um, it's never really, and we did something on that. What do you think, Ken? Nobody's really clamoring for it at this point. So I'd say put it on the back burner. We can always resurrect it down the road. If somebody, if somebody starts shouting for the idea, then yeah, we could do it. And series once again came up um uh for me i'd, I'd like to uh, i'd like to try and and uh and do something with that over the next few months um let me see if i can get uh a bit more done on that and resubmit it oh. i'm going to try and concentrate on on v pole though for the moment then so to give it some time out in the distant future. Cool. 
<clears throat> so does server side subscription get subscription get de adopted or do we just leave it as a as a zombie? How do you feel about zombie drafts? But it goes in the data tracker. It yeah. stays as a expired. Uh... It's an expired yeah. document. Cool. Just leave it expired. I, th I think it's, it still has some some merit. It's just uh, <clears throat> there's nobody <laughs> shouting for it. We can mark it as dead if we want, just to so that it's clear that we're not working on it and it's not uh, you know overlooked. But we are not cruel, that much cruel in that working group. <laughs> cool. All right. And if there's any. Um, or I think there is. Mark. Kill it. If you're killing it, then somebody puts on the death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, should I go there? Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Ben Buchs. Um, I've been working on Thunderbird, and we've been adding um, the feature of HTML descriptions in the calendar. That was a frequently requested feature by end users because they're getting meeting invitations from Microsoft Teams, for example, um, which are very weirdly formatted with very long URLs in the plain text, uh, very unreadable. And, um, <laughs> and the HTML that looks really nice. So that's clearly the format that Microsoft intended it to be looked at. And um, that was a fairly common user request. Um, HTML descriptions are obviously useful for many other things. If you want to may put an add a meeting agenda, uh, you have bulleted lists, you have titles, you have much more ways to say what you want to talk about during that meeting. So uh, we tried to add that and we ran into multiple problems. The main obvious one is that there's no clear specification about how to do that. So I can't remember whether in iCal description is explicitly plain text. I believe it is. Yes, it, it is. Okay. Um, that's good. Um, so that doesn't work. Um, and the result is that there's a few other proposals um, or um, things in the wild. Uh, there is an X, um, X alt desk uh, property, uh, which has apparently has been used by Microsoft in the past. But now they've dropped it. But if you search for HTML description in iCal, you that's the first thing you find to how to do that. But apparently nobody is using that in the wild that I could see apart from old Microsoft software, old Outlook or something. Um, and what most seem to be doing, they're just dumping HTML into the plain text description, which is obviously problematic because it's there's no clear way to know whether this is actually now plain text or HTML. And I have to know that before I can display it because of new lines, how to format it, do I use fixed fixed width, do I use, uh, how do I display that? Uh, if it's plain text, I need to in insert new lines. If it's HTML, I won't, uh, I have to use a parser. So that's not clear. Uh, Google is doing that. So Google is just dumping HTML randomly into the description in the Google Calendar. Sometimes it's plain text, sometimes it's HTML. You got to figure out what it is. Have so you uh, looked at the event pub spec with style description in it? Say again? The event pub spec has styled description, which is, a, which is specifically for this. And it was, um, um, it was, it was uh, developed along with um, input from, from Google. Is that... I, I don't I don't know this event pop spec. Is it yeah, uh, yeah, iCal? It's just Ken. RFC nine zero seven three. It's um, iCalendar extensions, and one of the properties is style description for exactly this purpose. Okay, uh, so Google doesn't seem to be using it, but okay, that's that answers the question. Um, I found something else in an old spec. Uh, the original spec actually had an alternative representation for property alt rep. So the description. That's, that's yeah, that that was that was really not uh, 
there was we a... looked at that so uh, can can i just finish what i found so um so the um so there was this this alt wrap it is actually in the standard and it, with an example um i kind of have a, a description property with a parameter of alt wrap which contains a url and the example that they make is an HTTP URL, which is obviously a problem. Um, but then we had the idea, hey, we could put a data URL in there. And the data URL contains the MIME type. So what we're doing right now is we're putting description always as plain text. And then it has an alt wrap equals data text HTML and then the HTML in there in line in the parameter of the description property. So that's what Thunderbird is doing right now. Um, uh, we were the only ones doing that as far as I know. Um, Nextcloud Calendar, I think, is doing that now. Um, there's um, also the problem between synchronization between the two. So you don't want to have two properties. That's what problem with the alt uh, X alt desk, because we had the problem in Nextcloud. They were editing the description, and then the HTML was out of sync, and we didn't know which one is the right one. So the property is the parameter is better because if you edit the property, it's more obvious that you need to drop the parameter of that property that is out of sync. That's, um, uh, that's, that's the status okay, that's, as I know right now. I don't know about the event uh, style. So the parameter is used just the same. I mean, people will ignore the parameter and update the description. Um, so you, you've really got the same problem. And and yeah, we've got a we've got a property which um, is fully specified for exactly this purpose. Um, the description property itself is is um, is optional, so you could have just a style description. Um, but um, so it sounds like we have a. Uh evangelism problem if this is not well known enough that, that people out there are using it. So that was published in August 21, so I really looked really hard for that and didn't find that anywhere. Right. It, it is. But, um, I think that's, that's true in general. I mean, the number of times I find people still referring to 2554, um, only last week in fact. So it's, it, it's common, yes. This is Ken, so that it, it may not be foolproof, but the style description um, can have a, a derived parameter on it. So if if you're trying to keep things in sync, you can, well, I, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, did, it, does derived go on style description or just description? I forget which way we went with it. Um, but essentially, I, I, if, if one of those two properties is derived from the other one, you're supposed to flag it so that I think the description has it. I think the, the other. Yeah, I think the description property, um, it, it was thought it would go the other way around. You'd uh, have a simplified um, description based on the HTML. Yeah, that, that's right. So, yeah, if you've got rich text and style descript in, description, you want just have plain text in description, mm -hmm. you put that there and then, then flag it as derived. So anybody that understands the new property would would know that you have to update both. So what happens? So the, the problem are clients which don't know about SARS's description, right? So they see description. They don't know about the derive. They don't know what it is. So that's being going to be ignored. So they modify the description. So now I end up with a description. In which what says situation? E. In what situation does that Sorry, occur, though? Can, can I finish my sentence? And then thank you. Oh, so sorry, you end I'm up with a. a with a description which says B and a style description which says A, none of them says derived, so you don't know what you, which one to take. 
But what 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 situation does that occur in? I am editing the calendar in Thunderbird, which supports supports the latest standard, and then I edit the calendar in let's say okay. Outlook or whatever client which does not know about this, and um, I synchronize the back calendar back. So I have two different user clients which both added that, and they do not. One supports but, but, the standard, the one the other doesn't. That does happen. But, I'm not making this up. I know it can can happen, but it's it's uh, it, it's the it's the same user using two different clients, isn't it? Yes, but that, that is a very common use case. Uh, I don't know how common that yeah, is. But but, yes, it's very common. Like you have a web interface in Google, and then you have Thunderbird, and then you have a mobile client. You have three different clients editing. The I think thing. you'll get the same effect with param if somebody updates this to support a parameter, they can update it to support a property. I mean, the, the situation's the same. Its clients are out of date, out of step. Well, with a parameter, at least it's clear that the parameter needs to be dropped. Like a client that's editing a property needs to drop the parameters. They right. pro they won't unless they know specifically that it. I mean, five five four has to say it, it says explicitly they're supposed to preserve it. So if they don't know about what it is, they'll just preserve it, and it'll be out of step with the description. <laughs> So there needs to be some because that is a real bug. Like I'm not making this up. These are I know, but it's the same. It's, 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 but it's the so same problem. Whether it's, it's the same problem, whether it's a parameter or, or a property. Uh, Apple tried this with I can't remember which particular um, uh, uh, property they they added some property somewhere which was essentially a more complex version of something. I think it was their extended location. They tried putting uh, checksums in and the rest of it, and they found even with their own clients, it was an imperfect solution. It just didn't didn't work. You just have to hope that people will move to the new thing and and implement it properly. Um, that's been part of the problem we have with with iCounter. I think it's why I argue very strongly for having a version and always updating it so people know that they they are not fully supporting the current spec. Um, so are you are you suggesting that every that there's a check from being added because whatever we do needs to be interoperable? They, they tried that and it it just didn't work. I, I, all I'm saying is I, that I don't think there's any difference between a parameter and a property in the in in this sense in that they will get out of step. Either yeah, way, I, I hear you, but I'm saying we need some kind of solution for that. The so, the solution is for people to fully support the latest version of of whatever it is and and uh, make sure they they keep these things in step. Yeah, but yeah, I cannot control other clients. I know. Uh, it's, it's sort I, cannot, of I cannot change Google Calendar. Yeah. But I, or, I don't think we can solve that just by, by the spec. And given that we have a style description property, I, I'd, I'd have to keep using that. I don't so, think the parameter is any better. So there is a way to do that. You could do a style description which contains all the properties and including the HTML and including the text. And then you define you have to update both at the same time. And then the description is there for legacy purposes. And then it's basically a copy of that. And if you see that description is there and it's out of sync with the plain text version of the start description, then you see that it was another client and you drop that. So there is a way to do that. It's just, uh, did, 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 was that clear? Was it clear what I said? Yeah, uh, I was just going to make the point that we need some something new, either as as you suggested, a parameter or a property. But we've already got a property defined, and I don't see where one is more preferable over the other. So let's just use what's already defined and, and make it work correctly. None of which we can do without buy-in from from the rest of the vendors, obviously. So I, I'm, I don't care how it's called. I mean, it's it's obviously a problem if, because we have certain things already deployed, right? There needs to be conversion, no but whatever. Um, but if we is supposed to use style description, we need to have both HTML and the plain text version in the style description so that I can see that this matches the description. So can I do both in the style description? Can I put both I, HTML and I don't, plain text? Why, why do you need both in the same? So yeah, so that he can detect if it's change if if a client updates just the plain description and doesn't know about style description, it won't update the copy of it in there as well. So you can see they're different, and therefore you can know that the, the yeah. yeah so the, the, I mean, the question here really is about how do clients handle things they don't understand? 
because that and because that's how you make something more backwards compatible. We are basically out of time. Um, it feels like this is worth writing up to the list as a description of the problem. Um, I think this could be explained quite clearly in text. So yeah, maybe, maybe do you want to do that? Try to. Uh, yep. All right. So that'll be the action for that. Uh, I've got the milestones up here. I think the only one we really need to change is kicking the submitting JS calendar mapping documents further ahead. It was set for July 2023. Um, Vpol was still planning to do, calendar series was still planning to do, and that was that were the only milestones we had. So I don't think there's any new work um, that came up today, and it's just those ones there. And if I'm mistaken, um, the other things have already been submitted, so there's just a matter of refreshing them. So there we go, milestones done in record time. We finished exactly on time. Thank you very much, everybody. See you in Brisbane. Sweet. But I see you at the dinner in an hour. <laughs> <laughs>